And why was it that we were pointing to 2008 and pointing to 2008 for a long time? Well, what we knew in 2008 was that something was going to happen. And that was we were going to see a big jump in the number of people turning age 62. Now, there's a couple questions I have here. First, when did we know that a person born in 1946 <laughs> would turn 62 <laughs> in 2008? <laughs> Perhaps a more relevant question is, did we do anything to prepare for that day? And not so much. Why is 62 an important year? Well, it turns out, at 62, legally, you become eligible for old age uh, uh, survivor insurance with uh, Social Security, and basically Social Security pension. Uh, and, and for the average American and the average Minnesotan, by the time you're 63, half of all the people in the workplace will have already received their first Social Security check. They don't wait till full retirement. They don't wait till 65 or 66. Half have already received their first Social Security check by 63. And that's been true for about two decades. It may be changing, but that has been true for some time, age of entitlement. And over the next decade in Minnesota and in Ramsey County and throughout the metropolitan area and in the United States and in all this, we're very average. We're exceptional in almost every way. Minnesota is an exceptional place. We have one of the highest incomes, lowest poverty, highest levels of education, best place to raise children. Minnesota is just a remarkable place. Boy, we are a blessed people. Wow, we really are. This is really a remarkable place. But we're not special in one thing. As it turns out, we are exactly the national average on age structure. We have exactly the national average on age structure. So anything I say about Minnesota is also true of the United States. And over the next decade, virtually all of our population growth is going to be in people 60 and over. People 60 and over. Now there's two other generations that are of interest here. One is this bit off to the left. <clears throat> Uh, these are the people that were born in the late 60s and through the 70s, and it was their fault that we had to lay off teachers and close schools <laughs> in the 70s. They should have known better to have more brothers and sisters, uh, but they didn't. And as it turns out, there's a very small generation. They're not moving out of Minnesota. This is a group that's actually moving into Minnesota. We actually have a net inflow of Gen Xers to Minnesota. Uh, but the problem is, is that there aren't very many of them. There never were very many of them. It's a small generation. The issue for this decade is, this is the decade that they will be at their peak productivity years. This is the decade that they will be at full economic stride. And in Minnesota, and in the Twin Cities, and in the nation, that's a very small generation. It's a very small generation. And then the next generation down is the one that some folks refer to as the millennials. Uh, uh, others have referred to it as Gen Y, the baby boomlet. Uh, these are the people that are about 30, 31 right now at the oldest. You know, it's a little variable dating for the oldest, but we know exactly who the youngest are. The youngest are the kids that graduated from high school last year. That will be the largest high school graduating class for over a decade in Minnesota and the United States. And these are the children of that big glob generation, and the big glob did not replace itself. And therein lies the issue. Therein lies the issue. So, <clears throat> look at a couple versions of this. First, let me just look at three age groups. Three age groups. 18 to 24 year old age group was called that college age population. The 65 year old population, uh, let's call that uh, uh, health care and social services for an aging population. And the 5 to 17 year old, let's call that K-12 education. 
And if you go back, this graph goes back to 1950 and out to 2060. And yes, we do know exactly what's going to happen in 2060. <laughs> but we do have a, actually a pretty decent idea, okay? That's, I mean, that's 60 years from now. Babies that are being born today will be 50 years old when this, when this ends, okay? So, you know, it's a, this is looking out a little, a little bit. But we do have a fairly good idea of what's going to happen. And one of the things I want to point out is that the, the gold line and the maroon line were actually, until 1990, were very close together. We had about as many people over age 65 as we did uh, people age 18 to 24. They were about the same size population, and they tended to move together. And in 1980, we spent the same amount of money in state government on higher education as we did on medical assistance for long-term care issues. Today we spend three times as much on medical assistance long-term care issues as we do on higher education. And higher education is declining as a percent of the budget every year. Separation began. The big separation has yet to happen. The big separation has yet to happen. That begins in 2011. 2011 is now, what, seven months away. That's when the separation really begins. And then by 2020, by 2020, we'll have more old people, 65 and older, than we have kids in K-12 education. And what we're seeing is a rejiggering of the budget priorities based upon population size. And these three age groups and these three components comprise three quarters of the state government general fund budget. 75% is taken up by these three, these three age groups. Everything else, the bureaucracy, all the parks and recreation, local government aid, uh, all the other uh, human services programs, uh, uh, roads and bridges and all that other stuff that's in the general fund budget comprises 25%. These three components comprise 75% and there's one of them that's really growing right now and it's going to take off here starting next year. It's going to start growing at a very, very, very rapid pace and we don't know how we're going to pay for it next year let alone 10 years from now, when it really starts spiking. 